Hello, everybody. How is it going today? <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Yuna, for a nice talk. <laughs> and I would like to first thank all you guys because I really appreciate that you come here today. And I would like to thank all the organizers for such a nice event. And before we actually start, let's test the sound because we will need a sound today. Accessibility testing with a screen reader, web content, hi there, slash, 675480802-mine-icon.svg, image, what's up, slash, 675480802-mine-icon.svg, image, slide content, voiceover off. And as you could see from this small example, sometimes there is a big difference between how the page looks and how it sounds. And this is our topic for today. We are going to talk about screen readers and how we can use screen readers for accessibility testing. My name is Sergey Krieger. I'm a front-end developer of the company called Sinerschrader in Germany. <coughs> we are a big web agency with the main office in Hamburg and the offices in Munich, uh, Berlin, Frankfurt, and Prague. We are building web applications for the clients like Allianz, OD, BMW, and many others. Before we actually uh, dive into screen reader topic, let's discuss about what screen readers actually are and why we as developers need screen readers. A screen reader is a software for both desktop and mobile devices that reads all the content from your operating system, including web browsers. Screen readers are mostly used by people with visual impairments and sometimes it can be the only way how those people are getting information from web. OK, screen reader is an amazing tool, but we probably will not use screen reader without a real need for that, right? So what is our interest as developers in using screen readers? Have you ever tried to browse at least familiar web pages without actually seeing a screen? You should definitely try it out, because you understand then how different it is from seeing real graphical interfaces and interacting with the big and colorful elements on the page. But there is a big group of people who use the web exactly that way. And those people are also our users. And we, as developers, need to understand their way of using our pages. Accessibility also is not optional anymore. There are a couple of countries uh, where accessibility is required by law. And more and more companies want their website to be accessible, and it's our job as developers to make them accessible. We can consider a screen reader as another tool for building and testing our web applications. And if you guys still don't have that skill, you're in the right place today. I'm going to show you how we can use screen reader for testing. Last year, an organization called WebAIM has conducted a big survey about screen readers where about 2,000 people took part in, and I find results from that survey really interesting. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Here's a list of most common screen readers. And how many of you guys are using Mac for developing? How about Windows? Oh, not so many. Do we have some Linux users here? Oh, surprisingly. Sorry for you guys. <laughs> Two of most common screen readers, JAWS and NVDA, are built for Windows only. And as developers, we need to understand that screen readers, they're like browsers. They're different. And they're working differently in different operating systems, in different browsers. And we need to know those differences. And here is a list of things uh, how screen reader users are actually navigating the web. And for me, this information is the most important from the whole survey because it shows us what exactly we need to test in our application. We don't want to waste our time for testing something. We need to know exactly how screen reader users are using our web pages, and we need to test exactly those things. And today, the practical part of this presentation will be based exactly on these things. Good. Now we know what screen readers are, and I hope now you understand the importance of screen readers for accessibility testing. So let's discuss how we can use screen reader. Here's a small plan. Uh, we will follow today, and at the first, we will uh, go quickly through setup and installation processes and discuss some differences between screen readers and operating system systems. And then I will uh, tell you about how to avoid a couple of problems you will definitely meet when you're just starting with the screen readers. And then 
I will introduce you a checklist for learning screen readers, so you can follow that checklist and learn how to use screen readers in practice. If you're a Mac user, you're a lucky one, because VoiceOver screen reader on Mac OS doesn't require any additional actions from your site. It's already installed and ready to use, and the only thing you need to know about that screen reader is how to start it, and I will tell you how to do that. If you are planning to use NVDA screen reader, the situation is a bit different. You need to do everything manually, and first of all, you need to download uh, NVDA screen reader from official website. And before you download, you kindly ask to donate some money. It's optional, but uh, since NVDA screen reader is totally free for all the users, I don't see anything bad to support developers, but it's optional. And technically, after downloading and installing NVDA Screen Reader, it's ready to use, but if you're planning to use NVDA Screen Reader for long term, I would recommend you to install some additional voices, because um, default voices in NVDA Screen Reader are not really nice, they sound not really neutral. And also, you may think of installing some plugins. For example, there is a nice plugin which highlights a virtual cursor, the cursor that shows you where exactly on the page you are. So you can uh, visit this website with plugins and check them out. If you are thinking about Joe Screen Reader, everything is really simple. You go to official web page, you download Screen Reader, you install it, and the installation process is really straightforward. And uh, then on the first run, you will be asked to activate that. And for activation, there are a couple of options. First of all, you can buy an uh, activation key uh, on official website and use it for one single machine. But if you are a web agency, for example, you can consider the second option, which is a physical USB dongle, which contains a secret key, and y many developers can use the same USB dongle for uh, working with this screen reader. For example, my company bought for us one USB dongle, and all of us are using that. And also, if you are not sure yet if you're planning to use a screen reader or not, it's pretty expensive, by the way, you can try it out for 40 minutes, and after 40 minutes, you'll be asked to reload your system. And believe me or not, guys, when you're just starting with a screen reader, you will meet two problems. I had those problems, and I know some of my colleagues also had those problems, and I'm here today to tell you about what those problems are and how you can avoid them. But before, I have a short story. Several years ago, six or seven, I bought my first MacBook Pro, and I was a Windows user for years, and I didn't know how to use this new environment, and maybe you know that if you're moving from uh, Windows to Mac, it takes some time to get familiar with the system. And at the first day, or maybe at the second, I didn't really know what to do with that system. And accidentally, I clicked a couple of keys on my keyboard, and suddenly screen uh, my computer started talking to me. <laughs> I was really shocked because at that time, I didn't know what accessibility is, what screen readers are, and why people may use screen readers. So I didn't know what to do with that. Uh, computer speaking to me, and the best solution I found, I couldn't even go to browser and Google it because I didn't know how to open the browser at the first day. And the best solution I found is reloading the page, or the system, sorry. And to be honest, reloading worked. Screen reader stopped talking to me, I didn't hear it anymore, but I would say reloading the system is not the best way how to deal with the screen reader. So the first thing you need to know about screen readers is how to quickly start it and how to quickly exit it. That's really important. If you want to be efficient with a screen reader, you need to do how to do that quickly. And by the way, you don't need to memorize all these uh, shortcuts today. I will give you the link to this presentation. And if you see an asterisk next to a um, shortcut, that means that this shortcut is not activated by default. You need to do it manually in settings. The second problem is probably the most important problem. When you start your screen reader, it starts talking to you immediately. And it starts pronouncing everything, like from operating system you're using, from uh, active application you, you are in, and many, many meta, meta information. And if you want to test just a small part of your page, you don't have to listen to this. And when you are just starting with a screen reader, you maybe 
I don't know, it's easy to get tired of screen reader. And you need to know a magic key for shutting screen reader up. And this magic key in all screen readers is a control key. You click control key and you tell screen reader, sorry guys, just stop talking. And the good thing, when you click control key again, it's uh, continuous talking from the place you stopped it. Another important thing you need to know about screen reader is a screen reader key. Screen reader key is a combination of one or sometimes two keys that in addition to other keys can perform all the actions screen reader have. Uh, screen readers also are smart enough to work differently uh, with a big keyboard in desktop and tiny keyboard in laptop. So you need to know which keyboard type is used. And a screen reader key depends on this uh, keyboard type. And you can see it in the settings. And here we go. Enough theory for today. Let's do some practice. Here's a checklist I created for you guys. And this checklist is almost entirely based on information we saw in screen reader survey. After completing all, this, all these items, you will be able to start using screen reader for accessibility testing. And today, in real examples, we'll go through that checklist step by step and see how we can use screen reader. But before we start, one uh, small thing to say. This presentation contains several demos. And just a second. And you will be seeing me reloading the demo pages time to time. If you see that I reload the page, just know that's not cheating. <laughs> this presentation engine I used today, uh, it's not working perfectly yet with uh, screen readers. So in order to have today better screen reader experience, I will be reloading the page. OK, headings. Headings are extremely important for screen reader users. According to statistics, uh, most of screen reader users, when they come to the page for the first time, then they read all the headings first in order to understand the page structure and what is this page about. And then they make a decision, either they want to stay on the page or they want to leave it. When testing screen readers, it's really important to make sure that all the headings are readable by screen reader and the heading structure is done properly. And here is a demo page. And there is not too much here, just some text and headings. And oh, there is also Panda here, but we are not going to test Panda today. We are going to test headings. And let's pretend now that we are screen reader users. And as screen reader users, we are not supposed to see the screen, right? So in order to make uh, our testing today more fun, we will switch off the light, start our screen reader, And now, using a shortcut from the previous slides, we will try to navigate through all the headings. Heading not found. Oops. And screen reader tells us that uh, it couldn't recognize any headings. But look at the page. There are some headings. So obviously, there are some problems here. Let's take a look at the headings. And here we go. These are our headings. From the design point of view, it doesn't matter which element you use for headings. You can even use a checkbox for that <laughs> and style it if you want. But um, if you want screen reader uh, to be able to read your headings, you need to use original uh, heading elements. That's really simple, but uh, I see it again and again that people just don't use it for some reason. So here's a good example. Let's do the same. We'll switch off the light on the screen, start our screen reader. And now we will try again to navigate through all the headings. Heading level one, giant panda. Heading level two, behavior. Heading level two, diet. And if we click uh, shift and use the same shortcut, we'll be able to navigate backwards. Heading level two, behavior. Heading level one, giant panda. Voice over off. Good. Our headings are OK now. Let's go further. Navigating through links can be really useful for screen reader users, especially when they're already familiar with the page. Uh, with a screen reader, it's possible to navigate through visited, link, visited links only and find the link you already clicked uh, one day. Here's the same page with a couple of links on that. And now we will use screen reader to navigate through all the links. Voice over on Chrome. Link not found. 
And again, screen reader couldn't find any link. Voice over off. Let's do some debugging and check why it's happening. And here are our links. And you can see that some of the links are not really links. It's, mm, these are simple spans with the custom click handler on that. Or on some of the links are links, but you can see that href attribute is missing. The golden rule here is to know that if we want screen reader to be able to read all the links on the page, we need to either have a real link with a real href attribute and URL, it's the really best case, or at least to have a link element with empty href. I know that looks really uh, silly to have empty href, but screen readers this way will be able to recognize, yes, this is a link, and they will consider this as a link. Or if for some weird reason you cannot use uh, a HTML element with href, you can use any element, but raw link will do the trick also. A screen reader will be able to read the link. Let's try it out. And now I'm gonna uh, navigate through all the links. China, Lake, Changing Mountains, Visit Lake, Sichuan, Lake, Bamboo, Visit Lake. Okay, it's working now. And now I will try to navigate through visited links only. Changing Mountains, Visited Lake, First Visited Lake, oh. Changing Mountains, Bamboo, Visited Lake, Voice Over Off. And it's working now. Good. There are many ways how you can read the text with the screen reader. Screen reader are extremely good in reading, so screen reader read the text. That's, what, uh, that's why they were built for. And in my practice, I mostly use two ways of reading. Reading all the content and reading sentence by sentence. And we are going to test all these things. The same page. Uh, with the links, text, and headings. And now our goal is to read uh, this, all the text on this page. I started my uh, screen reader, and now I'm going to press shortcut for reading all the text from the very top. Uh, but wait, screen reader just told us that there are an image here, and I didn't see any image. Let's go back and check that out. And yes, there is an image, and for some reason there is a text in that image. I know that this looks really stupid, but people are using that, especially in banners or on some other advertising. So sometimes developers use the text inside the image. You cannot really control that, but you can improve that. If for some reason, for some weird, weird reason, you want to use image and some text in that, you need to make this text accessible, and you can do that with alternative text. And the rule here is that if you have any text in any form in your web page, you need to make that uh, accessible. It's, and it's not really obvious. It doesn't happen automatically. You need to think of that. Here's a good example, and now we will try to read the text uh, again. Oops. Voice over on Chrome. Heading level one, giant panda. The giant panda is a bear native to south central China. Image. And you can see that this is a still image, but screen reader is able to read this text, which is nice. Let's read further. Heading level two. And you can see that if you have a link in the text, uh, this link will be pronounced separately because usually links have some meta information on that. Good. Now we are able to read all this text, which is amazing. All of you guys are, are probably know what landmarks are. Landmarks are uh, fancy HTML5 elements which divide all the content into bigger parts like header, footer, main content, navigation, etc. And landmarks can be really useful for navigating through the page with a screen reader. Let's imagine the situation that we are going to read some news and we uh, came to the page, to the news page, and choose some articles to read, go to the page, and then we don't want to read 
all the text on the page, right? We just want to read uh, the news content. And we can, we can uh, jump from the top of the page to the main content with the landmarks if the page structure is done properly. Unfortunately, VoiceOver on Mac doesn't have any dedicated shortcut for uh, navigating through landmarks, but luckily we can use a navigation tool for that. So here is a demo page, a bit more complicated than the previous ones. And there, there is header here, footer, main content, two navigation bars, and some text. And now we will try to use landmark navigation and jump directly to the main content. I started my screen reader, and now I'm going to open the navigation uh, tool. This is a, an element tool, a navigation tool in uh, VoiceOver. It's called Rotor. And here is a landmark list. And you can see that there are no landmarks here. So we cannot navigate through them. We go to the code and see that the same problem again and again. People are not using uh, semantic elements. If we want screen reader users to be able to navigate through all the landmarks, we need to use proper elements for that. And there is no magic here. You just use it. You just don't use diff. You use a header for that, which is obvious. But again, people are not doing that for some reason. And here is a good example. Now we will try to navigate through our landmarks again. I started my screen reader. I am opening the navigation tool. And here we go. There is a list of landmarks. And now, using arrow keys, we can navigate through them. Application, banner, navigation, main, content info, navigation. And let's say we want to jump directly to the main content. We just choose it from the list, main. click Enter. The giant panda is a bear native to South Central China. And now we can start reading uh, the content. Heading level two. The giant panda spends its life roaming and feeding into the bamboo. Voice over off. So it's working. Now we can navigate through landmarks. Let's discuss about navigation tool. A navigation tool is the most convenient way how to navigate through different elements list on the page. Uh, you can navigate through headings, you can navigate through the links, you can navigate through tables or iframes if you have any. So it's really, really convenient. In VoiceOver on macOS, uh, you can customize your navigation tool as you want. You can choose any element, element groups from the list and they will appear in the navigation tool, which is really nice. In Joe's screen reader, the situation is slightly different. Uh, there, there is no one single tool, but there are two things you need to know. There is a quick key manager when you can uh, set or see all uh, shortcuts for different elements groups. And then you can open, using that, you can use those shortcuts to open navigation tool for separate elements groups, like headings or uh, tables or forms, if you have some on the page. So you can use it. Uh, it's really simple to navigate through elements groups with the Joe screen reader. With NVDA screen reader, everything is simple. Uh, it works almost the same like element list on uh, VoiceOver. The only difference, you cannot customize it. But all these options you see now on the screen are more than enough for accessibility testing. So it does what it should do. And guys, we are done with our checklist. It's not too much. and. Everybody can do that. From my experience, I would say it will not take uh, more than 30 minutes for you uh, to start using screen reader. So please, please find some time in your schedule. Open this presentation, follow this checklist, learn how to use screen reader, and start using screen reader for accessibility testing. Using screen reader and learning screen reader is not more complicated than learning how to ride a bike, for example. It works exactly the same way. It's hard at the beginning, but once you learn it, you probably uh, will not forget it. Let's recap what we learned today. There are three most common screen readers. Joe screen reader, NVDA, and VoiceOver. And as developers, we need screen readers. We need them for accessibility testing, and we need them for understanding our users to understand their way of interacting with our pages. And learning screen reader is extremely simple. 
Once you got familiar with basic options we covered today, you may be interested in learning how to deal with forms, which is a standalone and huge topic in screen reader world. You can learn how to navigate through images or through lists, for example, or you can learn how to read the tables with the screen reader, which is really important because we can use tables for many, many things. If you need to learn, uh, if you need to find some more information about screen readers, please go to official documentation for each screen reader. It's really nice. And there is also a nice article on WebAIM about how to test with the screen readers, why to test with screen readers. It's really interested, interesting. And there is a video series on YouTube recorded by Rob Dodson from Google. It's called Alicast. It's about accessibility in general, but there are a couple of videos uh, about screen readers also. And here is the link to this presentation. And if you want to contact me after the conference, you can uh, use the Twitter or my website. And thank you very much. Thank you, Sergey. Well done. So I have some questions for you, Thanks, not only me, yeah. actually. So uh, it's really great to see like a nice, simple, or oh, here, here's, here are the tools, here's what we can do, here's how simple it actually is to improve it is. things. It is simple. Yeah, because very often it's just forgotten. Um, there are many dark sides that are often a kind of misconceptions that um, often show up. One of them is that accessibility readers do not have proper JavaScript support. That's true. Yes, but and we need to do everything manually then. So yes. you cannot actually test it, but well, that's how it is. Yeah, so, but in terms of JavaScript support, so for example, for the smashing redesign, we had to write quite a lot of JavaScript to make sure that elements are focusable, keyboard navigation, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, in many ways, it's, it's not that they don't support JavaScript at all, right? There is some support, so for example, you showed this example with the link, right? But there are probably uh, some things that need to be kept in mind there. So is there any way to automate accessibility testing? Uh, accessibility testing in general, yes. Screen reader testing, not really. Uh, you can do something. Of, uh, if you use a button, for example, you need to know if this button is focusable or not. You can do that. You can uh, assign a state with a JavaScript and just test if it's focused or not. It's easy. But with a screen reader, there is no way how, to you, can, how you can check what kind of text assigned to this element, because th this text can be taken from uh, this element or some children or some right, other properties, right. etc. So right now, no, but I would be really happy to have that because uh, you will do that and you will write your automated tests and no need to worry about yeah. anything. There enough. are some things like contrast checker that, that of course, oh, you can yeah, do. I'm but then I'm when it comes to yeah. interaction, especially for things like forms. Yeah, but anyway, it's more like manual. I do it manually. I don't yeah. like automate automated contrast testing. Yeah. Um, I also see a lot of problems showing up whenever it comes to any kind of forms. So tables is a story on its own as well. But forms, especially showing up the error messages in a way of pronouncing yep. or making uh, error messages accessible to screen readers or consumable to screen readers is something that's very often forgotten uh, as well. Uh, so what are some of those really critical things that are important to know about forms? Uh, we need to update uh, screen reader as we have some um, new content on the screen. Uh, sometimes we have this red border around error uh, field, for example, if you write an email in the wrong way or something, and it's not enough to have a red uh, border. We need to have some text, and we have some text, actually. It's not a big deal to add some text, but this text should be pronounceable by screen reader also. And how do you push the attention of the screen reader, kind of focus uh, There's a, a special attribute, area uh, life, life yes. And there are three. Um, values in this, of this attribute. It can be switch off by off attribute, off value. It can be uh, polite, meaning that if screen reader is talking something, it's going to continue talking. And then when he stops, uh, the thing, new thing will be pronounced. And there is a uh, oh, assertive, I guess, assertive. 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 Yeah. yeah. Assertive, which will stop your screen reader and it will be pronounced immediately. Yeah. I like it, but it's not really recommend, recommended to use assertive. OK. And it's the same way if you have a light box, for example, a pop-up or something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, yes. It will not be showed. It will not be announced oh, at all. For pop-up, there are like um, 
for exactly pop up, there are like many ways how to do that. There is an area model which will do yeah. the trick, but it's really nice to use a uh, area life in this case also. I using that. Yes, and we have uh, web content accessibility guidelines and area. And so, as far as I understood, web content accessibility guidelines are just basic things like color, contrast, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And area gives us those possibilities, advanced possibilities of what we can do to announce certain yep. things and move to certain regions. So, however, I heard that the first rule of area is that you're not supposed to use area. Yeah, exactly. I do agree with that. So Maybe we can elaborate a bit, just so to make it clear. This is a really nice rule, actually, uh, not using area uh, labels. For example, in this presentation, there was a possibility to use uh, alternative text attribute. I used that, but sometimes there is no way if it's simple diff, you need to use something. Yes, um, but essentially, in many ways, if you write, you know, h1, h2, h3, mm -hmm. you don't have to add a role yeah. or area attributes explaining sure. that this is actually yeah. an area. Um, I'm also uh, uh, we have a question from Matthew who is asking: Do you test? Did you test using Narrator, Microsoft Narrator, which is like a Microsoft screen reader what? in Narrator? Ah, no, no. So uh, I personally don't do that because I mostly test on Mac, but the point of this presentation and actually from my practice also, uh, I just, I've taken three most popular tools and I'm testing in them, yes. but Rater is not uh, one of them. Yeah, it's just one it of It wasn't the least, actually there were like 10, uh, there was a Zoom also for Windows, something else, I just don't know how to call those guys, like all these tools, but I'm using also, uh, only most popular because after voiceover, which takes 11%, like some of them take one or 2% and the rest of stuff like screen reader, for example, on Linux, 0.3%. Why okay. would you need to tell them? Uh, so, because Matthew writes that it's like voiceover on Windows. So, um, I haven't looked into it either. So, that's interesting. Uh, maybe the last one. Um, we, oh, we talk a lot about accessibility in terms of the content on the websites. Yep. But when it comes to single page applications, or when it comes to email, or SVG, I know it's HTML email. I mean, it's, I know it's an entirely different you yeah, know, minefield I, I, at this point. I got the yeah, question. I don't know anything about emails because I didn't do any emails yet. Uh, about SVG, it, it's just an HTML element. You can do it, but you need to do it manually. So there is no support, fo focus support and or right. screen reader but support. If, if you have, let's say, text I within SVG, inside of SVG, SVG Oh, sorry? If you have text inside of SVG, as, you yeah, know, you can have a text, text it like a title. Out. It doesn't work really nice in all screen readers. It's better to use area, uh, what is that? Area label or something like that. So title, original title is not supported. And um, well, yeah, that's that's it. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to just browsing through your slides and learn, memorize all of those keyboard shortcuts. But thanks yeah. for being here, Sergey. Yeah. Well done.